Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for my very first King Arts 1 Ninth Scale Diecast Iron Man figure unboxing and review video. Now I've seen the comments, you all have been telling me over and over again, check out King Arts, they do amazing work. So when I finally decided to do just that, I had to start off with the OG, the granddaddy himself, the Iron Man Mark III. Now interestingly enough, this guy is branded as an Iron Man 3 figure. I think that was around the time they initially got the license for Iron Man. So technically yes, this suit did appear in that film in the Hall of Armor in the background. Nevertheless, I'm super excited to check this guy out. Now if you would like to pick him up or any of the other 1 9th scale diecast figures, they are available from ToysWonderland.com. Link of course is down in the description below and they do have 12 month installment plans if you are a fan of paying off your figures over time. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art for King Arts Mark III. Now I have to say for a 1 9th scale figure this box is relatively sizable. It actually reads more along the lines of a 1 6th scale figure, that's how big this box is in hand. But I'm not complaining, the artwork looks fantastic. Iron Man 3 logo up on top, then of course an image of the figure himself done in this gorgeous metallic. On the side, pretty much nothing. On the back, another image of the figure himself. Now I personally have been very, very curious because King Arts, unlike Hot Toys, actually made pretty much all of the House Party Protocol suits. So if y'all do enjoy this King Arts review, do let me know because I am contemplating picking up the rest of the line. And here we have him. First in hand impressions are, yeah, this guy is one hefty boy, I can definitely feel the die cast here. But more on that in just a second. As you can see though, he comes with a few bits and pieces, so what we're gonna do now is get them all laid out in the light box and take a closer look and everything he comes with. Here we have all of the bits and pieces that come with Iron Man Mark III. Now let's start off with the display base first. If you're a Hot Toys Iron Man collector, this will be a very familiar sight. Hot Toys did something almost exactly like this for their Iron Man 3 line. And just like the Hot Toys figures, yes, this piece does light up. Flicking the switch, as you can see, the exterior perimeter does glow a nice vibrant white. And you do have a few more hidden features. The front features a Mark III nameplate. You can remove that if you so desire. But it also has this flip up section where you can screw in the dynamic flight pole. So if you're not using it, it can be completely hidden. That right there is a really nice touch. Now you do get two different versions of a dynamic flight pole. A shorter one, the top is ratcheted and of course you can open it up to be a waist grabber. And you also get a longer one if you'd like to have your Iron Man in mid-flight. Now you do get some swap out attachments. You get these pieces which do house the dart pods and they are articulated as well. Don't worry, by the way, you will see all of this stuff installed on the figure a little bit later in the video. You also get the shield that he uses in Iron Man 1. And then you get these little swap out sections which do feel very small and flimsy. So do be careful when you are installing them but this is of course his pop out tank buster missile that he uses like a total badass in the first film. You also get an array of hands. This might be the first ever time that I've seen these sort of grabbing style hands pre-sculpted for an Iron Man figure, but I really like it. And you also get fully articulated fingers, just like you'd get with Hot Toys. What we are going to do now though is get the Mark III himself out here and take a closer look. Here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And so far, yeah, it does what it says on the tin. It's a die-cast 1 9th scale version of the Iron Man Mark III, my personal favourite suit of armour. So I'm fairly happy that I started off my King Arts journey with this guy. 
Now I don't have a ton of experience with one ninth scale. I've unboxed two other one ninth scale pieces and so far I'm loving the size. They're not too small like sometimes I find with some one twelfth scale pieces and I know that some people can't quite find the room in either their budget or on their shelf for the larger one six scale pieces from Hot Toys. So this could be a great middle ground if you find yourself in either of those two predicaments. For me though, I wanted something different. Something a little bit smaller that still retains a ton of features and a ton of die cast. And that's this guy right here. So yeah, I'm pretty happy so far. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have him up close and personal. Now so far so good with my first in hand impressions of a King Arts Iron Man figure. He looks and he feels the way he should. There is clearly a ton of metal here and it feels super high quality. The paint applications are also gorgeous. There's a beautiful metallic glossy shine to it. I personally was hoping for that more satin dark finish to the red. This is a little bit more of a glossy candy red. I know some people really do like this style of finish, but for me I was hoping for a slightly less saturated colour palette. I know, crazy to say because usually more vibrant is better, but this is isn't entirely accurate to his appearance in Iron Man 1. Who knows, they may have painted the suit differently in the CGI model for the Hall of Armor in Iron Man 3, but for me I was hoping this would be just a little bit darker. Either way, the detail in the sculpt for the helmet is on point. That very clearly looks like the Mark III. It's sculpted immaculately, there's a ton of detail here, and the lines are very crisp and sharp. Now just like a Hot Toys figure, you can remove the chest plate except this time this entire piece is metal. There is some detail on the underside and it's painted beautifully with a nice metallic silver, but I do like that this piece is die cast, it makes this guy feel really hefty in hand. Up here on the shoulders you once again get more die cast, but on the back you do have some opening and moving flaps that reveal some detail on the underside. Now the upper flaps are the pieces that you swap out for the missile pods and we'll do that in just a second. Coming down to the arms, these things look awesome as well. The cool thing that they have nailed here is the proportions. This guy looks like a dude in a suit. I say that a lot when I talk about Iron Man figures, but for specifically Iron Man 1, it has to look real because it was a practical suit. So yes, the arms are slightly more bulky, so too is the upper torso, but that's accurate to how the suit really did look. Now these pieces also do swap out with either the missile or the shield. Once again, you'll see that in just a second. Coming down to the legs, these are also sculpted and painted very nicely, but you do have some pieces that you can remove to see some additional detail. Once again, these removable pieces are made of metal, and he does have all of the detail that you'd expect from the film, with the working little pistons on the inside painted very nicely in a beautiful metallic silver, and then of course you simply snap all of these pieces back into place. It's not the easiest thing to do in the world, especially on camera, but trust me, once you get this guy in hand and you start to learn the way all of these various bits and pieces come on and off, it really isn't a big deal. Lastly, coming down to the feet, the cool thing is there is actually a light up effect on the foot itself. You have the switch down below, unfortunately the batteries in mine are long since dead, but you can pop some batteries in the feet in the hands, in the arc reactor, and also in the head to get this guy fully illuminated. Now I'm pretty sure you'll want to see him fully armoured up with all of his weapon attachments, just the same as I do, so there you have it. All of the various bits and pieces have been applied. I really do like the little missile or dart pod sections up the top here. They can swivel forward and back, and they still retain the opening flap gimmick just like the regular panels do. 
Then we have the shield. We do see him using this when Ironmonger was shooting at him on the rooftop. This kind of pops out of his gauntlet. It's super nicely detailed. There's some gunmetal, some bright punchy silver, and then of course the glossy red. Then lastly, you do get a missile for both sides. And I really like the way it's been sculpted to kind of give you the suggestion of this having popped out of his gauntlet here. It looks fantastic. So yeah, so far I'm really impressed with this figure. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the King Arts Mark III on the left and the ZD Toys Mark VII on the right. Now that guy is a smaller scale, it's around the 7 inch scale. So hopefully this gives you a rough idea as to how this King Arts Mark III will work in your collection. It's a scale all to its own. You can't really fudge it into another collection, it has to be a King Arts specific display because it's one ninth scale. There aren't a ton of figures that are in that scale, so if you're going with this, go in knowing full well that you're going to be picking up only King Arts releases. For now at least, who knows, someone else might pick up the scale and start making figures in one ninth as well, but for now I personally am fairly happy with this release. So who knows, by the end of the video, I may or may not decide to pick up more by King Arts. Just going over articulation on the King Arts Mark III. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Now starting off with the helmet, there's a ball joint at the base of the head and another at the base of the neck, so going forward and back, total non-issue, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms themselves will go up to about there, they will of course go forward and back, and there is a ball joint for a little bit of butterfly at the shoulder. Swivel at the bicep, a single bend at the elbow, and of course a ball joint for the wrist. As for the torso, you get a ton of range going forward, and a little bit going back, swivel and some pivot side to side. Now the legs themselves do drop down on multiple points, they will go forward to there, they will go out to about there, so not a ton of range, swivel at multiple points at the upper thigh, a single bend at the knee, actually I do think it is a double, but unfortunately you only get 290, a ball joint down here for the ankle, plus of course some toe articulation. Just wrapping up on the King Arts Iron Man 1 Mark III. Now I had no idea what to expect going into the video, because I've never owned anything from King Arts before. This might be my first Iron Man figure from the company, but it definitely won't be my last. I've been impressed with some key things. Number one, the diecast content. This dude is hefty, and he's all the better for it. He feels fantastic in hand. You can hear the metallic clang when you're moving the joints around. It's a very tactile experience posing up this figure. The proportions look great. You all know that's a very big thing for me. It needs to look like a dude in a suit. Specifically based off Iron Man 1, it was Robert Downey Jr. in a practical suit, so this has to look exactly like that for it to be worthwhile in my opinion, and I think they nailed the proportions. Then we get to the paint. It's not as dark or a satin finish as I would like, but I can still admit it looks gorgeous. The punchy, vibrant metallic look to the gold and the red, it's super glossy, it's super metallic, it looks very impressive, but still not quite where I personally would like it to be. If they were to ever revisit the Mark III and do it in a darker, dingier color tone, more accurate to the movie, I know I personally would be quite happy. Overall though, yes, I love this figure, I will totally be picking up more figures in the line. Do let me know though down below which one you'd like to see next. Now if you'd like to pick up your very own King Arts Mark III, he is available from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is down below, and they do have 12 month installment plans if you are a fan of paying off your figures over time. Also check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. 
like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video. Through your article. First, to side.